Yo, what is going on, guys? It is Foxy United here. Welcome back to a brand new episode of my F1 2019 career mode video for you guys today here on the channel. Today, we are here for the German Grand Prix, and it's been a frustrating episode, actually, to start off with. Um, so, I believe we had, like, four, maybe, I think it was four upgrades uh, that were set to come on the car, or maybe three. I mean, you can see on your screens right there that um, the major rear downforce upgrades and the drag upgrades both failed on the car, so then once again, I've got to spend even more resource points now um, getting them in onto the car, uh, and I believe the, uh, I think we had the tire wear upgrade available for this episode, but yeah, uh, really frustrating. Um, I know obviously at this stage, I could potentially, as you can see, uh, Mercedes and Ferrari make upgrades. Renault have been very close to Ferrari and Mercedes, and now they've plateaued a bit in this episode. Um, I could obviously make uh, the use the quality control updates, um, but it's kind of getting to that point now where I've purchased so many upgrades, um, and of course, I, I like I said, I, everyone I think has been caught out by the speed that the AIs up, upgrade in this game. Uh, I think it's a really good thing, uh, personally, but um, yeah, we were all caught out by that, but um, we're going to have to see how we get along. Uh, here for a qualifying there for the German Grand Prix. Heading around then uh, for the first uh, run here. Uh, I think this might be my second run actually because uh, I don't. I already had a lap time on the board. But um, it was only P13. Now I was very, very decent uh, around, especially in the first sector. Sector 1 I was about 3 tenths a lap faster. Um, and then in the middle sector is I think probably where my weakest point was. In qualifying the final sector was really bad for me. Um, but I found out that in the race I was a lot more competitive in that section of the track. Um, but um, yeah, once again, um, it was all about pretty much a learning curve. You can see here towards sector last corner, I just carried a bit too much speed on the uh, mid corner there. And as we cross the line, it is going to be uh, an initial bad run of uh, 1.6 seconds off the pace. I think I was on a used set of uh, soft tyres on that first run. Um, but then annoyingly on my second run here, um, the rain started to fall um, and I just couldn't improve on my lap. I tried, um, but like the rain came down and it ruined my parade. So I decided to retire from session. I couldn't find any extra improvements. Uh, and it was a bit of a frustrating one, to be honest. Lando Norris gets through into Q3 quite comfortably. Um, but obviously myself and Max Verstappen and the Red Bull uh, knocked out in uh, Q2. Yeah, so um, pretty frustrating, not gonna lie. Um, but I, like I said, I took the chance. Uh, and uh, I knew it was going to rain. Good day today. Let's have your take on it. Yeah, it's a great day. How will not making Q3 affect your strategy tomorrow? I was about to say that, actually. These soft tyres, they don't last long around Germany, so it means that the one stop's going to help us. There are rumours that you're looking for a contract with another team. Is there any truth to that? Um, wow. They're trying to get all speculative on me. Well... Thanks, anyway. Yeah, I didn't think Claire would start... Well, yeah, that's the first time I've ever seen an interview on anyone's career modes, or even just in general for me personally, where they've gone ahead and tried to speculate me moving teams in, in the transfer business. Damn, that's pretty impressive. Um, but yeah, it's going to be 15th place on the grid. Uh, bad qualifying session. Let's just get straight into the race and see how he can get on. Good afternoon and welcome to a place that is very special to us all in the Formula One community. It's the Hockenheim Ring, home of the German Grand Prix. Always good for a close scrap is Hockenheim. Think back to Alonso, Ricardo, Vettel as recently as 2014. And I'm expecting some more strong racing today. We're racing in the Rhine Valley this weekend at the home of many of the sport's finest competitors. The 2.8 mile Hockenheim Ring requires precision through the technical stadium section and great raw speed down the long flat out curve towards the popular overtaking zone of the turn six hairpin. Watch out for a lot of wheel to wheel action there today. Uh, not really, to be honest. I mean, you do get a bit of a pep talk, I suppose. There's certainly somewhat of a raised sense of importance when it's the team's home race, but at the end of the day, we're all professionals. I mean, I want to win every race I compete in, and the teams want to win every race they compete in too. So the stakes are unbelievably high at this level. I mean, the effort is 100%, 24-7 all year round, whether it's your home Grand Prix or not. It's time to see how our drivers are stacking up after yesterday's exciting qualifying session. Valtteri Bottas lines up on pole position and starting alongside in P2 is Sebastian Vettel. Moving on to the rest of the grid, we have Leclerc, Hamilton, Devon Butler and Perez, Norris, Rojan, Weber and George Russell, Magnussen, Verstappen, Lance Stroll, Thomas, Gasly, Albon, Nico Hülkenberg and Kimi Raikkonen, Sainz. 
and Antonio Giovinazzi starts from the back of the grid. And now it's time to head down to the track. Okay, so we're here on the grid now to start this German Grand Prix. And as you can see, obviously we didn't make it through into Q3. Um, but we are going to start on the medium tyres and then go to a set of the hards. It's going to be 14th on the grid, so we've gained the place for the grid penalties. But it's five red lights now here for the start of this Grand Prix. And it's lights out where we go here to start the German Grand Prix. A decent getaway actually uh, from us, but we're going to stick to the inside line. And uh, we've got Pierre Gasly on our right-hand side there. Got to be careful, lock up there uh, as we go towards first corner. But Gasly gets a better run around the outside to the first corner and he snatches 14th place off myself but we're now going to go down inside of Gasly and uh, I might have accidentally smacked the Haas car there a little bit a bit silly on the brakes there uh, I lifted off to give uh, the uh, position back because I was sort of getting in front of him on traction um, but I actually let off the throttle and gave the position back to the Haas car and now on the run down down towards the hairpin now I will make my attack on the Haas car and I've got a lot of good straight line speed in this McLaren so we're going to go down the inside of him and also try and make it sick on one of the Williams cars there as well of I believe it's uh, George Russell uh, so let's see if we can try and get this one done but he's got a bit of better exit there. Also, it's got the slipstream of his teammate as well as we go through in towards this uh, stadium, the Mercedes Benz Grandstand. Lovely switch there to the inside line, and um, you can ignore that corner. It was completely fine. Nothing wrong with that at all. Um, but uh, yeah, I kind of misjudged my, my point there, but um, oh well, it is what it is. People misjudge corners all the time. And at the end of the day, the FIA allow racing now, which is a complete shock, so we'll get away with it. Um, but as we come in towards uh, the Saks curve uh, for the first time, a little bit wide there, but it actually allows us to get a slightly better exit. And uh, next up the road is the other Williams car of Lucas Weber. And uh, you can see they're a bit off on the exit, um, but we get through there. And that's the first lap done and dusted. And uh, up into 10th place, four places gained on the first lap. Uh, on to lap two to start lap three of the Grand Prix now. Vettel sets fastest lap of the race, followed by Valtteri Bottas with a 113.5. Uh, let's try and see where our pace compares to all of that. So 115.1. Um, so we're a long way off the pace, um, but we've got a great run there. It's a fantastic run through turn one there. And uh, yeah, we can now get onto the back of Weber, who goes defensive, actually. Uh, and that just allows me to just try and do the switch back. Didn't work fully as I locked up a little bit, but it's a great exit in the left. So taking that inner line. Now we go to hot lap and Rich makes it here. Open up the DRS, boxing Weber a little bit. So it allows me to grab the slipstream off Roman Grosjean. And I'm sorry, like, I'm literally just an absolute god in a straight line there. As we now go down the insides heavily on Roman Grosjean. Lock up on the both front tyres there. As uh, I was actually changing my differential back, I was trying to swap the ERS deployment back down to medium again. But I was actually swapping the diff, not that one. So then I was sort of panicking because I wasn't braking enough. So I just double locked up there. Um, but I still made the corner and I still got the overtake then on Grosjean. So... Uh, I mean, that's completely fine. Now on to the back of Lando Norris here. We're on lap four of the Grand Prix. Now, obviously, these guys are on worn soft tyres. So at this stage of the race, their soft tyres are already going to start to fade here. Uh, and my medium tyres are already just, well, they're literally just coming into their own at this stage of the race. So uh, from my perspective, I'm now one of the fastest men on track because these soft tyres uh, just do not last. So, um, yeah, it's a good position to be in. Um, but as you can see now, we've got a past uh, Devon Bolsack as well now as we make our way through into awesome Mercedes-Benz Grandstand. Shove off. Uh, Devon there and that actually gives Lando Norris an opportunity to come by as I lock up there into the Grand Sam but Norris swoops around the outside there of uh, Bullsack and uh, we're now up into sixth place in this Grand Prix now we're trying to chase up, up the road for Sergio Perez now in the uh, Renault car here and uh, we're going to try and attack him now going towards turn one slide a little bit there on the exit take our first or second warning for track extension I genuinely can't remember it I, I think that first lap when we cut that corner a little uh, marginally uh, maybe excessively on uh, the Williams car and Mercedes-Benz Grandstand. I think that was an extension, so I think I'm already on my second warning. So, throughout the rest of this race, I've got to be extremely careful, um, or I am going to get a penalty. I can't remember if it counts or not, to be honest. Um, but as I go now in towards the hairpin here, I actually broke a little bit too early compared to what Sergio did. Sergio absolutely lunged it in towards there. Now I'm going back into the slipstream of the Renault car here, and uh, we get in the slipstream now towards the Mercedes-Benz Grandstand, go to the inside line, break a tad earlier, but then we lock up slightly there, but we make the corner lovely there, and we squeeze Perez out wide. Beautiful overtaking move there. And uh, this is obviously the first race that I'm really having an opportunity uh, to do some proper wheel-to-wheel -wheel combat uh, using uh, no braking, uh, no ABS. Um, obviously, uh, in Silverstone, we had the chance as Perez comes back at us here with some DRS as we whack as he whacks into the side of me there. He had plenty of room. I gave him a tight inside line there. Double lockup. I actually dropped it into neutral by accident there um, as I was trying to break really late. But um, yeah, like I was saying, it was very difficult because I had uh, not had a like proper wheel-to-wheel -wheel combat on this game Uh with no ABS. This is my first race doing so. So obviously some of the moves I know have been a little bit weird and a little bit, you know, iffy and affy. 
I'm still learning, um, so that's what it is. Meanwhile, though, um, whilst we've been at the front and uh, fighting Sergio Perez off, we managed to build a gap to myself and Norris because Norris passed Perez. Whilst that was going on, the front runners came in off their soft tyres and they uh, pitted for a set of medium tyres. Now, whilst I was in some clean air, it gave me an opportunity to have a look and see what these guys were up to and how quickly they'd be able to close up onto the back of me. So we're on board with Bottas here, who is now onto the back of Magnussen as he opens up the DRS there and then blasts past and gets a second bite of it. Of course, on the F1 game, uh, the German Grand Prix has got three DRS zones. And of course, uh, people are probably going to wonder, in case anyone asks about it, uh, why does it have three DRS zones? Uh, well, of course, the um, it was only made on, I think it was the Thursday or the Friday um, before the German Grand Prix in real life was going to happen, that they removed the uh, DRS uh, zone on this pitch straight, which you're seeing overtakes done now. So that's why they threw on the games. Of course, it was three last year and it was set, set to stay at three this year. Um, but they made a very late change to get rid of that. So, um, yeah, that's why obviously we're seeing three DRS zones on the game. Um, but meanwhile, though... That's uh, George Russell now that they're trying to overtake here. And uh, Vettel and Bottas clearly get their way through. Um, but for Russell, though, he's still going to have DRS here on uh, Sebastian. So you can see he's carrying a lot of great straight line speed here. And I tried to go on board and see if he was getting into uh, Vettel's slipstream by any chance. Um, but now Charles Leclerc here. Well, he could have had the inside line there, but he didn't really go for it. George doing a great job there of just holding up the Ferrari driver. And it's not until the end of the lap and start of the next lap that in towards turn one seems to be the easiest place for these AIs to get their moves done. And, uh, of course, now George is under attack here from Lewis Hamilton, who is going to have DRS here. He can't find a way through, though, as George goes defensive there. And he's going to have DRS on Charles uh, on this straight now. He's just about uh, going to stay in it. So I don't think Hamilton is going to be in range to attack here. He'll have slipstream. Uh, on that uh, Williams car, but it depends if he's using higher engine modes or not. Looks like he might just be here. Hamilton fakes to the inside line, moves to the outside line then for the hairpin here now. And as you can see, Russell defends around the inside. Hamilton's going to have the outside. Better traction though, but that Williams car has got a very, very nice run there off that corner. And he's going to hold position, I think. He is going to do so there. Uh, meanwhile though, Bottas and uh, Vettel now are going to start going into a little bit of war here. As Vettel now goes towards the outside line here, this is going to be great if he can get this one done because it's going to literally send the German fans into complete overdrive here and uh, it's not going to work though. Bottas holds the position. I think Hamilton's just got past Russell in the background as well though as Vettel now. Once again it's going to have another opportunity. That's myself there. Currently actually leading the German Grand Prix but I'm still yet to make another stop in this race yet so I'm sort of out of the way of this uh, and I'm just doing my own race right now. Um, so uh, eventually these guys are going to close up to me but I'm extending my stint as much as I can so then obviously it's easy for my hard tyres then come the end now but as you can see once again here Vettel now with a much better run and this time uh, on the brakes though Bottas somehow comes out of nowhere and just slams on the brakes about 10 years later and now it's going to be a straight fight here between Seb and Bottas now through towards uh, the Mercedes-Benz grandstand they go you don't know who you want to be supporting at this point with the Mercedes-Benz grandstand have the Mercedes-Benz fans or they have Ferrari fans you just don't know around here um, but that's what's unique about Hockenheim you just don't know what fans you're going to get you're either going to have orange you're going to have silver you're going to have red you're just going to have them all uh, as we now go through in towards uh, this uh, stadium section Bottas holds the position off but a lap later now and Vettel is going to come back at Valtteri once again the Ferrari is still quick in a straight line Bottas under pressure now to try and defend the position the Ferrari is set goes the inside line this time he's been going the outside line all the way through and on that occasion Sebastian Vettel takes second place there's no fighting for Bottas anymore um, meanwhile for myself though lap 16 of the Grand Prix here and uh, just struggling a little bit on my tyres now um, they're getting very second hand um, and that is obviously allowing the likes of Vettel and Bottas to get right up my backside here. Um, but like I said, I'm not fighting these guys, so I'm just going to see here as Vettel now with the DRS. He's gaining very, very quickly here, but it isn't actually enough in the end to, to take the position. But I go very deep in towards the hairpin corner. Double lockup on the front two tyres, but I actually get a better exit there in the end and uh, kind of maintain position there. Um, but like I said, not holding up these guys. Um, I'm simply going to be doing my own race. Um, so I am coming in at the end of this lap. It's going to free these guys so they can go and do what they want to. Um, my tyres are getting very second hand now. Uh, so the back end slides out a little bit here. Vettel is going to have a sensational run towards the stadium section. But it's not going to be close enough here. Uh, gap two tenths per second, obviously. Uh, and this is a perfect time for me to box as well. Um, with these front runners now on the back of me, it's going to get to a point where they're going to start overtaking me on the straights. Uh, and uh, it's just going to lose not only them time trying to fight me, um, but it's also going to lose me a lot of time just being caught up in the battles that I don't need to be caught up in. So I'm coming in now for my uh, first stop of the Grand Prix and my only stop of the Grand Prix uh, to go on to a set of the hard tyres now. And they're going to take those to the end of the race. But it's been a great strategy so far doing this one stop. Most of the rivals that I'm around are on two stops. So uh, for me... It's all good in the hood. But anyway, 
Uh, it's a 2.1 second pit stop. And uh, we came out of the pits, or came into the pits in P1. And somehow we've managed to rejoin all the way back up in P5 again. So when everyone pitted much, much earlier than me, they were just involved in their own scraps. I just got on with my race. And I seemed to have much better pace than I expected. Uh, and that was literally that. There was nothing else that happened in this Grand Prix. Uh, Bottas does win though uh, for Mercedes here at the uh, Hockenheim ring um, but for me like I said um, yeah the second stint was really really dead um, and it was mainly due to the fact of course as we're going to come across the start finish line though it's going to be P5 for us though great result Mercedes have won it, and what a great race it was. Tell me, Ant, how did they manage to achieve this win? Well, I know it's a bit of a boring answer, but the truth is they simply had the best speed package on the day, and a driver who knows how to take advantage of that. It doesn't matter how much time you spend poring over the stats and planning strategies if you can't keep the pace, and our winner today showed they could do both. And I can see the drivers starting to approach the podium for the victory celebrations. A real team victory today. Everybody played their part. Congratulations then to Mercedes, your race winners today. So there we go then, guys. That is going to be it for this uh, Grand Prix. Bottas beat uh, Lewis Hamilton. So it was Mercedes 1-2. Only half a second, I think it was, separated those two across the line. So, yeah, really good result for them. Um, but you can see we were the best uh, finisher for the one-stoppers. Um, in the Drivers' Championship, the gap between Bottas and Hamilton extends to 28 points now. We are 40 points back in the Drivers' Championship. So we are falling away now uh, from the Mercedes crew as they really start to pick up the pace here. Uh, and then the constructors obviously still a long way back. Um, I believe we're going to have an interview with Claire, although last episode I said that and it never actually happened. So I should probably be more wary of what's going on in my career mode, but I can't remember. Good day today. Let's have your take on it. There was some contact between you two. What happened out there? Um, I know. Um, it's a video game. Oh, I should have gone the video game. Do you have any comments about the collisions? ABS off, still learning. Shut up. Well, thanks anyway. So yeah, there we go, guys. Um, that is going to be it for this episode of my F1 2019 career mode. Very fun race, actually. It was a great opportunity for me to get uh, get in hands-on uh, with some wheel-to-wheel -wheel combat and really see how that plays out for me in this game, uh, especially with no assists. Uh, it was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. Um, and like I said, we did a perfect strategy. The one-stop worked best for us. Uh, and we had such great pace, uh, especially when everyone came into the pits, that we were just able to just breeze off into the distance and have no form of issues elsewhere. But if you guys have enjoyed the video, feel free to obviously drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you've not yet subscribed already. Uh, meanwhile, for us, though, I can't even make the upgrade on the rear downforce. Uh, I don't even have enough resource points to do it, which is really frustrating. Um, but, um, yeah, we're going to go to the Hungarian Grand Prix next time around uh, and see how we get on. But anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching the video, and I'll see you next time. So take care, all. Peace.